In a previous video, I gave away this really cool circular magnifier effect. I did that to uh, demonstrate some of the cool new tools in DaVinci Resolve 18.1. And the two most common comments I got on this video were, uh, can you make it a square and show us how to do this ourselves? So let's do that. I'm here in DaVinci Resolve and I'm just gonna drag um, any old clip onto my timeline. That'll be great. And then I'm gonna click the fusion button to open that in the fusion page. Now we will have our media in uh, where the footage is coming into our scene and then the media out. Anything we do on the fusion page uh, in between these two, as long as it's going into the media out, will get sent back to the edit page. Now there is one pretty important distinction um, of what we're gonna do today versus what I did in that previous preset. We're gonna create a drag and drop edit page effect. So something that you can drag uh, right on a clip or an adjustment layer if you want some more flexibility. The reason I'm not making this a standalone uh, generator uh, like the past preset is that right now, um, it's not as smooth as I feel like it should be. There are some like extra steps you have to go through. They're just, just sort of a hassle. So I'm gonna try to keep this simple. And if in uh, an upcoming update, uh, DaVinci Resolve smooths some of those things out, um, I will absolutely walk through that process as well. But structure wise, uh, the only thing that means is that whatever preset I make, it needs to start with an open input on one node. And as long as we package that up uh, with that input open, it will recognize it as an effect and let us uh, apply that on any uh, clip or adjustment layer we want. So let's start building. The main effect here, of course, is that zoom. So coming out of this media in, I can create a transform node. And by default, you know, I'll just scale this up to what, like, 1.3, so like 30%. Yeah, that's a decent zoom. So now we have that zoomed in, uh, but now we want to limit the area to which you can see this zoomed in copy. And we can do that um, using this little mask input on this effect. If I just click this button up here to create um, a rectangle, uh, this is the rectangle mask feature. If I preview that by itself, it gives me this black and white image, um, and this is mask data. So uh, the white area, it is setting to an alpha of one. If you see down here in the corner, uh, it does an alpha of 255. That is uh, the max color data. So that means, yes, that's alpha at uh, full or one, and the black is alpha at zero. And then now if I plug this into this transform, you can see that that scaled version is only happening inside of that square. Now, um, a note on the size of this. By default, it is a rectangle, uh, but this width and height are both set to 0.5. So if I pull in this width, yes, we can get it to uh, about perfect square-ish, um, but these width and height numbers won't be the same. It is still sort of like creating this on our rectangle composition. So these numbers uh, will just look a little differently for how you think they might have to be displayed. But that's great. Uh, we have that zoomed in area, but now uh, what else do we do? Now, if you haven't seen this before, ooh, it's gonna be really cool. Um, first, I'm gonna create just a blank background node. I'm gonna set that to white. And uh, this is uh, what will eventually be the outline of this square we see. But I'm gonna take this rectangle mask and I'm actually uh, gonna copy that and go to Control Shift V to paste an instance node. Instance nodes, super, super cool. Uh, to help us preview a little bit better, um, I am gonna go ahead and connect that to the background. And if I preview that background, you see, yes, um, instead of that mask, it is now masking that background. Cool, but we don't want a solid, we want an outline. But if we were to go into that, um, instance node now and by default uh, uncheck solid and pull up this border width to be an outline uh oh if we go back to this transform node you see some weird stuff is happening that zoomed version is now only showing in that outline and again if we go back to that uh, first mask node that is now an outline as well I'm gonna go back to the instance uh, recheck solid uh, zero out that border width and what we need to do is uh, explain to you all what instance nodes are. Uh, instance nodes, as these two nodes appear, they are perfect copies. But if you click on the instance node, you'll see all of the parameters have these green outline boxes around them. So instance nodes are selective copies. If I come in here and uh, right click on this solid checkbox and go to D instance, then right click on border width and go to D instance, then I can uncheck solid, pull up border width a little bit, and if I preview uh, this here, come back to our original rectangle preview on viewer one, you see now, hey, that box is still solid even though this one is an outline, but they're still connected in all their other parameters. If I just move their position around, they're still perfectly linked. This is exactly what we want. We want this uh, rectangle that is matching this transform to stay solid, so the entire internal area is affected by that zoom, but we want this outline 
to just be there. And then uh, we can connect the output of that to the output of the transform, view that, and hey, uh, we have this zoomed in box. And anywhere we go, uh, it will zoom in that area. Now you might notice um, some really interesting like shifting going on. Like say I wanna zoom in on the scoreboard. If I go to right where that scoreboard is, um, it is like shift off. Like if I'm zooming in on the area, it shouldn't be right in the center, but you need to remember uh, on this transform node, it scaled up the entire image. So we pushed that relevant information off screen. So uh, the little workaround we need to do is uh, I'm gonna click this little button to uh, pin this transform controls. I'm gonna come to rectangle, uh, pin that as well. I'm going to right click on pivot of the transform, come down to expression. That'll give us this little pick whip. And I'm gonna click and drag that. So now the pivot is looking to the position of that rectangle mask. And when I do that, that fixes our issue. So now, if I preview this transform, look at the outer box. Um, oh, if I actually select both of them, so you see both of that. If I come to this rectangle and move that box, you see it is now moving the overall, this larger square, so that when we get to the corner, it perfectly lines up, it shows you that perfect corner, and uh, that's really helpful. So like, if you know you wanna zoom in like on this ammo count, you just move this box, right to where that ammo count is, and that is perfectly zoomed in on that area. Now, a, a really cool side benefit of um, starting with this rectangle, maybe I should have done this initially, if I come into either of these controls, it has this corner radius setting. And if you pull this up all the way, uh, let me preview that right, correct? Hey, it's a circle. <laughs> so you can have both of them. If you wanted a circle, uh, pull that up. If you wanted a square, pull that all the way down and you know, anywhere in between. Now there is one area where putting this together will be slightly more complicated um, than the circle version. And I just have to go back to the little mismatch between this width and height, but we can sort it out a-okay. Uh, as a static effect, this is really great. If we went through the process now of packaging this up, um, this would be something that would just pop on, but then after that, it would still work great. It just pops off, but hey, we want animation. And we are going to do that animation on these main width and height controls. So. Uh, I can go to either this rectangle or this instance rectangle. I'm going to uh, copy this value I have on the width, and then I'm going to right click and go to modify with anim curves. Anim curves, crazy, crazy powerful. I've said I'm gonna do a, a full video on it sometime. I will sometime. It's been so high up on my list for a really, really long time. But hey, stuff got exciting. We got 18.1. But, and if I come over to modifiers, we'll see the anim curves window. And by default, over the course of this video, it will keep expanding until that gets to a value of one. Uh, but we don't want that to be on continuous motion. We want it to stop at some point. And there are a few other ways you can do that. Uh, what we are going to do uh, is come to this source and change this to custom. Now it gives us this little input. And now we can uh, manually keyframe this to go from that zero to one move. But before we do that, I'm gonna come down to the scale. I'm gonna paste in that number we had yeah, into scale, and then whenever I keyframe that input to be one, we'll get back to that nice looking square. So then what I can do is come back to frame zero. Uh, I'm gonna set this input to zero. And then I just need to come forward the amount of frames you want this move to take. Um, I'll do, I don't know, close-ish to a second, uh, and then keyframe that to one. So now it'll be uh, nothing, and then as it zooms up, it gets to full, great. And a really cool option we have in this anim curves is this mirror option. You click that, then it will do that move at the beginning and then halfway through the comp, it will look at whatever anim curves have done so far and just reverse it. So when we get back to the end of our comp, it will do the opposite of that move. So cool, that's cool. Uh, you might've noticed uh, it sort of doesn't quite complete at the end. It does sort of like a weird one frame buffer deal. So uh, what I could do, I can pull up uh, my uh, spline viewer here. I'm just gonna shift those two keyframes, one keyframe to the right. Um, so it actually starts at frame one before it pops on. Then when it does that at the end, it will go all the way uh, back, maybe give it one more frame. Oh, you know what? At frame zero, let's go ahead and also set another keyframe there. So now it'll do those, get like that extra frame or so of space and then add it. And then when it's zooming out, uh, it will go all the way back that's thoroughly in the weed stuff you don't really need to care about. If it does look like something has like one extra frame at the very end, um, that just means that on the next frame, it is meant to be completely gone. And uh, if you have that on your edit page timeline, then on the next frame, the effect will just be gone anyway. That is the last frame there would be data. 
but that's a little workaround if you want it. So cool, uh, that scales up horizontally correct. Now we just need it the other way around. And this, uh, we have some help because uh, this height is still set to 0.5. I'll copy that anyway. Right click on height, modify with anim curves, uh, paste that in the scale, come over to custom. And hey, uh, since we already keyframed that move we want, uh, I will click mirror, but then I can right click on that input and go to connect to anim curves on the width and take the input and it will copy those keyframes over. And now, hey, the square zooms in, holds and zooms back out at the end. Very, very cool. Um, an option you have, if you want motion blur, you could come into either of those rectangle nodes back in tools, uh, settings, toggle on motion blur. That's an extra option really up to you. Motion blur can get intensive on your computer at times. So especially if you want to keep things light, um, you don't super need to bother with it, especially since it's just animating in at the beginning and end. But what we can do is come to, uh, we have the spline viewer open and this is our little easing curve for that custom. There is easing inside the anim curves tool. Um, but if you use that custom input, then you can open the spline viewer and add any easing you want right in there as well. And it will feel a little more, whoosh, a little more smooth. Now, this is our complete effect. It's taking the source, zooming it in selectively based on this mask, and then taking an instance of that mask that we are uh, outlining uh, to just be a standalone shape, which we are then combing back on top. So now the fun stuff, packaging all this up. And we're packaging this up using the very, very powerful macro system. And there is a lot of depth here. We're gonna take it at a very um, entry level approach. Keep things simple if you are putting together this um, as your first edit page effect. It's very exciting. What I'm gonna do is select uh, all these nodes, all the nodes um, that are involved in this effect. Remember, we are keeping that open input, so this will be an effect. I'm gonna right click on any of them and go to macro, create macro. That will give us this really cool prompt here. Uh, and. Uh, if we look through, you can close any of these uh, drop downs. You see all the nodes and importantly, uh, all those anim curves, any uh, modifier you add on a node will show up as a separate input on this list. And I can go through here um, and if I open up any of these, like the background, you have all of the controls that are available on that node. So for instance, this background, if I come to color, um, we have top, left, uh, green, red, and blue, all this other stuff. Uh, this is a little wild because it also has like options for gradients and stuff. But hey, this uh, top left, those are the primary color controls. So if I click through color all the way down to alpha, um, what that is doing, I'm signaling this pop up to say, hey, bundle these into uh, one new node and give me control over these options. And when I change these options, change them on that node. It might be a little confusing, uh, but let's go through some of the rest of them. Uh, important stuff, uh, I can come back to uh, rectangle one. I am just going to uh, grab center right here, center there. Uh, I'll just call that like effect center. Effect center, cool. On rectangle one, uh, over on transform, I am going to grab X size. You have an option in transform nodes, whether you want to zoom on the X or Y axis. By default, they're linked. So by default, this X size will be that master size control. And then just some other stuff I know I want uh, in that instance rectangle. I have the border width, that will be the outline. And then in these two anim curves, anim curves uh, one, remember, is that width. So if I come down to scale, I can call this with that's also another cool thing you can do here is rename how any of these appear and then anim curves to scale is height now we have went through checked a lot of boxes rename stuff i will name this something like magic square cool and then i'm going to come to file save as group. If you've looked at any of my past or even paid presets and plugins, you are able to fully open them in the fusion and then look at all of the nodes I use to create that effect. They're a giant learning resource. That's one of the things I really like about it. And it's possible because I chose this option, save as group. If you just do save as, it will sum all of those together and it will just be one single node. You'll still have the controls you chose here, uh, but it will be less evident all the work that went into the effect. I want to save as group. I will save this to a standard location that I have here, magic square. I will just click save and then I can close this window. And now, like I said, the macro system and especially bundling up presets and plugins and all that, there is so much depth there. I'm keeping things simple. Um, if you want more information on this part of the step, not necessarily um, 
inside the software bundling up that preset, but what to do once you have that dot setting file I just saved. Um, I have a recent video covering DRFX files. DRFX is the really cool feature they added in Resolve to take all of these presets, bundle them up, um, even add things like custom thumbnails or new included uh, media in the presets um, and just bundle them up so they can be very easily uh, sent or shared or even sold. Um, and super easy to install. You just double click. It sorts everything away in the uh, location that it needs to go. Uh, but especially if you are creating things for yourself, um, you don't need to go through all that process. You can do uh, this. So I can pull up where I save that and I have this magic square dot setting. And then in Fusion, I can pull up my effects library, come to templates, edit. I'm going to click on effects. Might need to think for a bit but then it will show us all of the effects I have on my system. There are some of them, but what I can do is come back to that file, that magic square, and just drag and drop that into this viewer window. I can do that. Again, give it a second to think. Um, you'll be able to know if it's still thinking, it won't let you like scroll on this window, but hey, uh, once it pops in, you'll be able to scroll again. Well, maybe. There we go. Now, uh, sometimes this requires a restart on its own, but we'll see. If I go to the edit page, uh, I will drag a new copy uh, onto this timeline. I'm also going to right click and make that a compound clip real quick, um, just because I have a slight uh, resolution uh, mismatch. If I come to effects, uh, I have effects here, uh, toolbox effects inside of that. And if I scroll down to M, we might see, hey, magic square. Now, what I'm going to do here for the most flexibility is actually come up, uh, drag and drop a new adjustment clip onto my layer and drag on magic square to that and boom we have our effect i can come back play it animates in holds animates out very cool and if i click that adjustment clip and my inspector is open and i come to effects i have all those custom controls i added uh, you can see if i change width and height it changes those and no matter where i change these because we used anim curves it still animates in to that value so it starts at zero super cool we have this effect center we can zoom this around we can change the color of this box the width of this box very very cool oh uh one control i didn't add here um which like you would want to add is that corner roundness if you wanted to sum down uh, to a circle as well, that would be really valuable. And while these controls are useful, um, uh, if I come down to this drop down menu and go to Fusion Overlay, that also gives us this on screen control for moving around this effect center option, which generally is like really nice to just like drag it exactly where you want. Um, especially if you're then keyframing, you could keyframe, drag it, keyframe, drag it, much easier than just like moving around these numbers. But hey, you just built a really powerful drag and drop effect. It's pretty wild because almost anything you can do in the fusion page can so easily be turned into a drag and drop effect i've done some really wild stuff that i show off all throughout my free presets and i know the fusion page is intimidating and uh making your own presets and plugins even more so but i think this is a really cool um approachable effect that just about anyone can work their way through there are a number of follow-ups i want to make covering different unique aspects of this process for instance whether you drag in something as um an effect or a transition or a title and generator you have to go about things in a slightly different process and even that has recently changed with some of the new features in 18.1 which again i am hoping they uh, smooth over some stuff on those so i can really show them off on this channel so all that will be coming as well stay tuned it'll be very exciting thanks for watching i'll see you next time